So I'm in the process of reviewing the 2019 LG C9 4K OLED TV and although the picture quality out of the box is pretty accurate, there's still some changes you can make to make it even better. So stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here and on this channel, we help you find and get the most out of the tech that entertains you. For example, TVs like this. So if you're into that, then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So in this video, we'll be going over the picture settings you can change to get the best picture quality out of HDR movies and gaming. But before we begin, there's one thing I have to go over and make clear, that these are not calibrated settings. Now, calibrated settings are individual to a TV, so using another person's calibrated settings might actually have an adverse effect on your TV. So that's something you should always keep in mind. But now that we've made that clear, let's go into the settings to see what I've changed so far and how it improved the picture quality. Oh, and before we even get into that, go check out the Villa merch store because we have new designs like this and some other cool ones, which I think you'll like. So go get a t-shirt. All right, enough shameless plugging. Let's get into it. All right, so first let's talk about the different picture modes. If we hold the settings button down, then we can get to the different picture modes and you'll see that there are several available. Now, I found that they range from okay to way too saturated. So for example, the vivid mode is way too saturated while the standard mode is fine. Uh, it's not bad, it's not good, it's just fine. I found where the three most accurate picture modes are the cinema picture modes and the technicolor expert. And the cinema picture mode is actually not as bright as the cinema home picture mode. Or the technicolor expert mode is the most accurate picture mode, but I found that cinema home is a very good balance. Now, if you go back to the settings of this picture mode, OLED light and contrast should remain at 100, while 50 is the midway point for brightness, which is where it should be. Everything else will remain the same, except for what I mentioned I made changes to in the video, by the way. So for temperature, color temperature, I found that W30 is a very good spot for it. So because it's not too cool and it's not too warm. So if we go all the way to the left, we'll see that the picture gets much warmer. And if we go all the way to the right, then we'll see that the picture gets much cooler. And OLEDs in general typically have a very cool picture. So bringing it to the warm side of the scale is where I found that it works best. Then we can go to advanced controls and in the advanced control dynamic contrast remains off because when you do this then when you do this it alters the black point so you lose contrast in certain instances in certain instances it may be good to enable but i haven't found that yet so i'll leave that off dynamic tone mapping this basically enables the tv to display scenes with higher brightness than the tv can support natively so i leave this on now there is two settings, on and off, and on, it, the picture is actually typically brighter than when it's off. Typically. Sometimes, in this case, as you can see, when you enable dynamic tone mapping, the screen gets darker as a result. It helps bring out the details in the very bright areas of the scene, so it's good to leave it enabled. Preferred color, I've never changed this. Then we can go to color gamut and it's best to just leave it on auto because then it'll switch depending on the input source. Super resolution, low. This is basically how the TV tries to improve blurry images by sharpening it. So then we can go to picture options, noise reduction, Noise reduction, this can be this can remain low or off, but I found that low doesn't affect the picture that much. So noise reduction, MPEG noise reduction, smooth gradation, we leave those low. Then we can go to motion eye care. So motion eye care may be good to enable if you have, say, vision problems where you're sensitive to bright flashes on the screen. So it helps reduce that. So if you have those kind of problems, then it's good to enable. But since I don't, I leave it off. 
true motion. Now this, I always turn all the way off. So the blur is basically motion enhancement. So if you're watching sports, like high frame rate uh, sports, for example, then it's good to have it all the way to the right. But if you're watching just regular TV, then this may introduce the soap opera effect, which I have always hated. And even Tom Cruise hates it. They even made a video about it saying, disable it as soon as you can because it just sucks. So all the way to the left, the blur and the jutter, because of the way uh, OLEDs handle motion, some may perceive it as having jutter. So in previous years, I've had it set to about two, which gets rid of the, the perception, but doesn't affect the picture negatively. But in the 2018 and 2019 models, I've seen where I don't even have to enable this at all. So I leave that at zero. And OLED motion, this is essentially black frame insertion, but I've seen where enabling this actually introduces a flicker to the, to the picture. So as you can see, when I enable it, it should help motion, but all I can see is the flicker and the screen gets darker as a result. So I never enable this. I always leave it disabled. AI brightness. I typically leave this off because the TV will then adjust the brightness based on the ambient lighting in your room, which could be good in certain instances because if you're in a dark room, then you don't need the TV to be as bright as it is in a bright room. So that's good to have. But for my tests, I've left it off. Your mileage may vary. And that's it for the HDR picture modes. Now let's look at the Dolby Vision. Now for Dolby Vision, you have most of the same picture modes available, except the Technicolor Expert. So Cinema and Cinema Home are just the same. So Cinema Home is brighter than the Cinema Mode, as you can see. So whatever settings I make on this picture mode, you can make on pretty much any other one. And you can see where the Vivid gets really saturated. The standard is fine, but as I say, I prefer the Cinema Home. Now, OLED light contrast and brightness remain the same like the HDR mode. There's not as many options to change in the Dolby Vision picture modes, just so you know. So the Gamma 2.2, white balance. Let's change this from warm one, warm two to warm one. Because I think warm two is too warm, but warm one is the Goldilocks of color temperature. <laughs> Just right. Method basically lets you determine the method at which the TV determines the white point. So this gets into professional calibration territory, which is something you can mess with, but do so at your own risk. If we go back, If we go back to peak brightness, for HDR modes, you want this to remain at high because one of the whole points of HDR besides having a wider color palette to choose from is having higher brightness. So you want peak brightness to remain at high. If we turn it off, then we see where the whole picture gets a lot dimmer. So we let that remain at high. And then if we go to picture options, noise reduction, MPEG, smooth gradation, all of that remains like the previous picture mode, but also again, true motion, we turn everything off. And in Dolby Vision, the black frame insertion will have the same effect of making the picture flicker like I mentioned before. I'm sure you'll get used to it over time, but that's not something I want to get used to anyway. So as always, disable it. 
motion eye care, same, and AI brightness, we turn that off. And those are pretty much all the settings you need to change in your picture modes for watching movies. Let's get into gaming. We don't even have to open a game to go in game mode, so let's just do that right here. So we select game mode and like everything else, Now, instead of having these set to low, we want them to remain in off because we don't want any processing, any picture processing on game mode because that may introduce some lag to the input. So let's have all of that remain at off. Motion eye care off, true motion off, AI brightness off. You could have enabled OLED motion, which is the black frame insertion again, but that's not something you want to do. Dynamic tone mapping, especially for gaming, you want this to be enabled because some games are mastered to over a thousand nits, which is beyond the OLED TV, beyond what OLED TV can support. So it's important to enable that so you don't lose information in those bright scenes. Color gamut, auto. Gamma 2.2, which is good. White balance, we want this to have a warm one temperature. We could have always used the apply to all inputs so that we don't have to set all of these to each input individually. But it's good to just walk through it since this is an instructional video. And those are pretty much all the changes that you need to make. So those are my settings. Now I'm still working on a review of the C9. So depending on when you're watching this, it might not be available yet. But in the meantime, there are the demos available. So I've made a gaming demo so far. So you can check that out in the card up there if you want to see that. There are also other videos I'm working on which feature the C9, like a comparison between streaming Dolby Vision and watching on a 4K Blu-ray disc. So Apple TV versus a 4K Blu-ray player. But the full review will also be live in a few days too. So make sure to stick around for that. But sound off in the comments, let me know. Will you be getting your TV professionally calibrated or will you just be changing the settings to wherever you like it? Also, don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe for more content. Until next time, this has been your friend in Neighborhood Villa Man saying, peace.